Well, Zimbabwe is in a state of flux now as the country's military rests path from the perennial 93-year-old ruler, Robert Mugabe. Well, there's been no uh, dramatic or drastic reaction to this by citizens, either for or against the military's move. But how did the country get here and what is next for this southern African nation? TVC News Tundio Show has a take on this. The colonial history of Zimbabwe, formerly known as Southern Rhodesia, dates back to 1890 when the British, following Cecil John Rhodes and his South African company, went there in search of gold. A long period of apartheid ensued and a bitter fight went on in search of freedom for the black people of the then Rhodesia. Fast forward, Mugabe helped the country gain independence in 1980 after a long colonial rule. A general election was held and the political party that he founded, ZANU-PF party, won the election. Robert Mugabe became the prime minister, a position in which the real power in the country was vested. He has been in power ever since. Zimbabwe's economic fortunes have consistently gone south throughout Mugabe's reign. Right now, the country is one of the poorest nations. Some economic research reports even list Zimbabwe as the poorest nation in the world. Zimbabwe leads the entire African continent in literacy though at 91%, but poverty and unemployment are both endemic in the country as a result of a shrinking economy and hyperinflation. As far back as 2007, Poverty rate in Zimbabwe was nearly 80%. Unemployment rate in 2009 was the world's largest at 95%. Only 5% of the population was employed at the time. And this is reflected even today in the country's economy. The local currency is considered a joke. To get one US dollar, you will have to fork out 362,000 Zimbabwe dollars. The country's per capita GDP is the third lowest in the world. Despite all the tales of war in the country, Mugabe has been able to hold on to power for 37 years. But now, it appears the party is over. As the military has taken control of the country, some questions have surfaced. If Mugabe's rule should now end, who would take over the reins of power? Two names surface. The country's former vice president, Emerson Mnangagwa, who was ousted earlier this month. He has said he planned to address the country as its head of state, quote, when the time is right, end quote. Then we have opposition leader Morgan Sangirai, who has reportedly returned to Zimbabwe this week. Although military officials say this is not a coup, the situation in the country and the military's action resemble one. The current crisis appears to be the result of a political shakeup earlier this month, but the problems go much deeper. Earlier in November, Mugabe fired his vice president, Emerson Munangagwa, and that seemed to have split his ZANU PF party. Even the army was at odds with this move. They support Munangagwa and has seen him as Mugabe's potential successor, maybe if Mugabe died in office. But the fight for his successor became heated and the first lady, Grace Mugabe, was caught in the fray with Nangagwa. It had appeared she won the battle against her rival as she positioned herself as a top candidate for the presidency once her husband dies. After Nangagwa was ousted, there was a purge of his allies from government. This might have forced the military to embark on the action to wrest power from the almost century-old leader. It is unclear what would happen next. The military's plans and intention are not yet known. Vice President Mnangagwa, who had earlier fled to South Africa, and opposition leader Sangirai are both back in the country. But the First Lady, Grace Mugabe, is rumored to be out of the country. That has been denied, but she hasn't been seen since the coup the military maintains is not a coup. We wish to make it abundantly clear that this is not a military takeover of government. Zimbabwe has been relatively peaceful since the military takeover. There have been no visible reactions from the citizens for or against the current events in the country. The most serious reactions from foreign missions and local leaders are simply calls for calm and restraint. 
So far, the deposed leader has refused to resign. Journalists are on ground to report the events, especially now that it looks as though this is the start of the wind down of Mugabe's rule. Should that happen, he would also lose his position as the world's oldest serving president. Tony Osho, TVC News, Lagos.